And hello, Sto community. Welcome to part eight of our Back to Basics tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about advanced NPC behaviors. We're back on our Vulcan ground map. I've put down an NPC contact, which is just the Academy cadet. And I've also put down an NPC group, which is a friendly group of um, a Federation mob. And you've probably messed around with some of this. You've clicked on an NPC and noticed a few options, such as you can change their costume and then there's also behavior. And if you click select behavior on an NPC contact, you either have contact or legacy contact. And those are pretty self-explanatory when you read the descriptions. However, if you click on an NPC group and you select what are their behavior, what is their behavior, then you'll have lots of different op options here. I'm not going to go through all the differences between these, just know that some are more limited than others. If you want to, say, animate an NPC group, and that's all you want to do, just click the animate. If you want to animate and have them uh, have a chat text, then you can do that with this option. The one option that contains every possible thing you can do, well, there are actually two. It's legacy combat and true combat. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the difference between legacy and true combat are, other than Legacy refers to kind of an original programming design of an old version of the Foundry. But I usually just click on Legacy Combat because I'm pretty comfortable using it. And because if you select it and go to the Advanced Behavior tab, it contains everything you can possibly do with the NPC group. So on the surface, you'll, you'll think, wow, I can do a lot more with the NPC group than I can with the NPC contact, except that's actually not true. You can do everything with an NPC contact by using this, using the single NPC groups. So there's a targ neutral single. You can use that for a friendly NPC contact. It's a mob with just one actor and you have all the behaviors available to you for that one actor, or you could do this with a hostile. Well, no, actually, they're both neutral. So there are limitations to what you can do, but if you do need to have an individual NPC patrol or to do some kind of advanced NPC behavior that you can only do with a group, there are ways to do it with just a single NPC. But let's go back to the squad. And we'll click on Advanced Behavior. And I'll try to quickly explain what all of this means. So Combat Entry Text is the first box. That's, the, that's what a character says in a bubble above their heads when combat starts. So if it's a group of Klingons, it's Kapla. That's pretty self-explanatory. If it's, if it's a friendly mob, then they have that Combat Entry Text if an unfriendly mob appears and they have to fight them. Enable Wander. Right now it's set to false, I'll set it to true, and that brings down additional options. Now your first question is probably, what is Wander? Well, Wander is kind of a mysterious thing. It's, it's something that even the most experienced and knowledgeable Foundry author still, I mean, they're still kind of confused by some of these aspects, and I am too. The reason that Wander can be so confusing is because in order to test anything with Wander, you have to publish the mission and go in and play the mission to see what anything does. Um, because Wander doesn't work in the preview mode. Fundamentally, Wander is the ability of your NPCs to wander around. So they'll spawn in the place that you put them, but depending upon the settings of Wander, they'll walk around occasionally, they'll stop, they'll pivot, they'll turn a different direction, they'll go someplace else. You don't have any control over exactly where they go, but you do have control over certain factors. Wander speed is how fast they walk. Wander duration is how long the wander lasts, so they'll start to walk and then they'll stop, and then they'll do something else and they'll start to walk and they'll stop. Wander Weight. We'll talk about that here in a second when we talk about the other options. Wander Distance. That's the distance from the original spawn point that your NPCs are allowed to travel. Wander Idle Time. I believe this refers to how long the NPC 
wanders, or how long it idles in, be in between the time it wanders. I might be wrong about that. Um, and I also might be wrong about path nodes, because no one that I talk to really understand, has, understands how path nodes work. I think, theoretically, it, it's the number of times your NPCs can pivot. So they stop and they change directions, and then they have a different path node. So the more path nodes you have, the more likely they'll be to pivot and go a different direction. Okay, so that's basically Wander. A lot of it has mixed successes or mixed results, and it's incredibly difficult to test. Normally what I do is if I want my NPCs to wander, I just turn wander on and I don't really mess around with these options too much. Next comes enable chat. If we change this to true, then it lets us specify a chat text, something they occasionally say, but also a chat animation, something they occasionally do while they say something. So that's really useful. You could have an NPC wander around, then he stops, and then he chats, and he does some animation, uh, and then he wanders around some more. The chat duration is how long the bubble appears over their head. The chat wait, we'll talk about that here in a second. And lastly comes, well, there's, well, not lastly, but there's idle animation, and that's something you can set an NPC to do to just do all the time. Anytime they're idling, they're in between tasks, then uh, they'll do this idle animation. Enable jobs. Okay, jobs. First, most authors that I know have pretty much given up on jobs entirely. The history behind the jobs is funny, because a long time ago, well, not really a long time ago, but a time ago in the details tab, there were certain co consoles, and if you search for the console, you would find them, and they would have little red icons in the thing. And if they had little red people icons, that meant that they could be associated with jobs. And what that means is that if you have jobs turned on, then if the NPC is near one of these special consoles, they'll walk up to it and type and then they'll walk to a different console and type. That's how it's supposed to work. But now, after recent changes to the Foundry, we have no idea which consoles work with jobs and which ones don't. The one that I know, and what's frustrating too, is there weren't that many to begin with. There were a few that, if you search for group, the word group, you'll find a few that do work with Wander. But in the end, Wander is kind of, it, it's... It doesn't look very good. I mean, your NPCs will type at the console, and they'll type at a weird height that doesn't match the console, and they'll keep typing as they walk to a different console, so they look more like zombies. So if you're making a zombie mission, you might think about jobs, because jobs could be useful for zombies. But if you're just trying to create an immersive interior for a Starfleet vessel, just ignore jobs. Okay, so those those are my explanations here, the only thing I haven't really explained is job weight. Okay, so imagine you have an NPC where everything is set. You have it set to idle, to wander, to chat, and to have jobs. Well, the NPC is going to cycle through these various tasks depending upon the weight. So right now, everything has a weight. Wander has a weight of 1, chat has a weight of 1, idle has a weight of 1, that means they're all going to do one of these things at equal equal opportunities, although it's still kind of random. But if you change the weight, if the weight is higher, say on wander, that means the NPCs are more likely to wander as it cycles through, as the NPC cycles through its various tasks of things to do. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, the only other thing that I haven't really explained is a different feature for advanced NPC behavior, and that is um, patrols. Now, I should admit, I haven't really, um, I haven't really messed around too much with patrols. Just like Wander, and like Jobs, 
the patrols don't work until you publish the mission. So if you're going to use patrols, you really have to set it up, change a setting, publish your mission, go in, watch what the NPCs do, come out, drop your mission, go back into the foundry, make a change, and you have to do that over and over again in order to test how how patrols work. But I have had success with very, very simple patrols. So here is the Sierra. And I've put the Sierra station map. I've put a group of NPCs on this map. If we click on them, it's a Borg squad. I'll go to select behavior and I'll click patrol. Now suddenly I have a patrol point and you can go back to advanced behavior and do a few different things to this patrol. You can affect the, the speed of the patrol mostly. Um, and you can also add a point, so you can have the patrol go one place here, and then add a new point for them to stop, and then they'll go a different place, and then they can go a different place. I found that I've had the most luck with it without getting too complicated, so here's an interior map, and I have a patrol point. Well, if I just move that one patrol point right here, and I publish the map, then the, the NPC, the group of NPCs, will calculate their own pathing. Um, so in preview mode, they'll just walk right into this wall and disappear. But in the published version, the pathing will take them at the route that gets them to this spot. And once they get to the spot, they'll turn around and they'll go back. So that's those are the basics of patrols. Lots of lots of bugginess going on with patrols. And lots of things that you don't really know how it's going to work and unless you publish the mission. So my advice would be if you're going to have a complicated patrol, build it first and then go in and test it. Make sure it works before you do anything story-wise relating to that patrol being necessary because you could write an entire mission and then do a patrol and then realize, wow, my patrol is really buggy. Another thing that you should really worry about now, especially with the reward system, is that a lot of these advanced NPC behaviors require that you publish the mission, go in and test. Please remember, and I can't emphasize this enough because it's affected some friends of mine, if you go in, publish your mission just to test something, and you complete your mission, that counts towards the average playtime. And the reason why that's important is because the reward structure now privileges missions that have to be over 15 minutes. So here's the thing. If you do a patrol and you go in and you publish and you test your patrol over and over again and, and you're completing your mission, well, then when you really have a mission that's, say, a 45-minute mission and you go to publish it as the real published version, it will have an average play time of four minutes and it'll take you hundreds, sometimes hundreds of plays in order to get that mission to qualify for rewards. And of course, no one will play your mission because it doesn't qualify for rewards. Okay, so I hope that, I hope that helps. That's my tutorial on advanced NPC behaviors. Thanks.